we are aware of how pressure is measured that is with help of barometer now we have to discuss another like similar concept here because we are discussing here atomic structure but we are discussing how pressure is measured what is element because this is all things we required here so we can understand the concept very clearly now here we are focusing now on a topic that is cathode rays experiment let us uh, discuss this in germany there was a glass blower named as uh, i don't know how to pronounce that but either gessler or gessler something name is like that so that gessler or gessler he uh, produced a tube that is called as hard glass tube having electrodes fitted in it uh okay just we discuss barometer at that time also we used the word hard glass tube the thing is that atmospheric pressure is very very high in our further discussion at some point uh, not in this lecture but in another lecture of physics we are going to discuss what is that great value of atmospheric pressure but right now i must uh, uh, it was be very clear that pressure is equivalent to nearly weight of three elephants so suppose hard glass tube uh, sorry ordinary glass tube is kept then what will happen suppose this is a tube atmospheric pressure that is almost equivalent to three elephants at a time they are pressing down the tube but it is not breaking why it is not breaking because there is some opening and from inside also same pressure is balanced out but the moment you start evacuating this evacuating means what you have to remove air from this as a result pressure from here will decrease and then tube may break so in order to avoid this rupture we have to use here hard glass tube so that can withstand this very very high pressure so for that purpose we are using here hard glass tube now gessler or gessler he produced hard glass tube and he provided some good things to this hard glass tube again telling this is just schematic diagram he put electrodes in this tube at the same time uh, he was there to make provision here so we can connect it to evacuation pump and we can evacuate this so from here we are evacuating that is what we are doing removing air from the tube whereas we placed here two electrodes let us consider this is as cathode cathode means here in this experiment we have to consider cathode as negative electrode and here positive because when we discuss electrochemistry in that chapter we are considering at some stages negative is cathode uh, uh, sorry anode and positive is cathode so like that things are also there therefore i am telling you that negative is not always cathode but in this experiment negative is cathode and positive is anode so this way electrodes are fed now scientists started working on this hard glass tube provided with electrode you are aware of electricity if you are having a dry cell pencil cell or triple a aa battery that uh, something like that you can check out the emf or voltage given there is 1.5 volt you can check out your uh, mobile phone's charger it is having input voltage something 230 to 110 volt like that input voltage whereas output voltage is 5 volt or plus than that so like that various voltages we can convert with help of transformer one type of transformer is called as step down transformer what is the role of step down transformer to decrease emf to reduce voltage say for example your your cell phone charger it reduces voltage from 230 volt to 5 volt or 6 volt depending upon the capacity so transformer one type is step down transformer other type of transformer is there that is called as step up transformer that is there to raise voltage now here the voltage a uh, rise is expected so scientists started rising voltage inside this whereas reducing pressure 
you are aware now pressure is measured in terms of 760 mm of mercury 760 mm of mercury is considered as one atmospheric pressure with help of this evacuation pump we can connect it to barometer and we can measure pressure inside scientists decrease out pressure till almost 10 mm of mercury so atmospheric pressure now decreases to very great uh, not atmospheric pressure inside the tube that was decreased to very very great extent that is almost 10 cm uh, 10 mm of mercury that means 1 cm of mercury and emf implemented is more then they were able to observe some crackling noise in the tube later on they were able to observe some lines of light inside the tube then onwards entire tube was having some sort of glow color then that were fragmented and like that variety of thing ultimately when pressure was in range of 0.1 mm of mercury see 0.1 mm of mercury almost vacuum and then emf the voltage is about 8000 volt at that time suddenly there was a darkness in the tube and then they observed the opposite side of cathode this is cathode opposite side of cathode the glass start emitting green color light this is something strange light is not produced from inside part it is produced from glass and then it is considered as discovery of cathode rays cathode is emitting something uh, radiations because of that radiations glass start glowing now scientists discovered another substance that is named as zinc sulfide known called sulfate the name is zinc sulfide so scientists uh, got the knowledge that if invisible radiations particularly high energy invisible radiations they are falling on zinc sulfide then zinc sulfide start glowing white color uh, white light now substances there therefore i am telling important important information maximum compounds of zinc are white only those who are compounds formed directly by zinc like zinc oxide zinc chloride zinc sulfide always keep in mind zinc compounds are having white color technically speaking we have to say they are colorless but practically speaking we are saying it is white but uh, ultimately we have to say it is colorless so zinc sulfide is almost colorless but we are saying it's white uh, you might have noticed in old days that tube lights were there not led tube light but uh, having choke starter like that tube lights were there in that tube light this white color powder is kept that is zinc sulfide whereas invisible radiations particularly beam of electron and ions they are getting collided with that screen and it start glowing giving white color so you have observed this all so this is zinc sulfide screen now scientists applied zinc sulfide over here in this portion they applied zinc sulfide and they realize that this portion is glowing with white light now not green they apply green light uh, sorry zinc sulfide everywhere but only opposite to the cathode that portion is glowing now they change the location of anode they place anode here now this is now anode they change the direction of anode still they observe radiations are going perpendicular to the surface of cathode that means it was very clear that radiations were emitted by cathode presence of anode is important but direction of anode is not important you can place anywhere anode here so this way first data of cathode rays that we got that cathode radiations are produced by cathode they are perpendicular to surface of cathode position of anode is not mattering out this now so modified tubes were produced again i am telling these are all schematic diagram you can consider this is now something like tv screen now here we have placed anode this is something like tv screen from front side it is 
uh, rectangular. So like that uh, tubes are produced where they place here track. Okay, but prior to track, I just consider uh, forget of track. Uh, first consider this way. Uh, they place here anode, cathode, and they place external electrical field. So this is positively charged. This is negative charge. Why I am saying here external electric field? The thing is that this is internal electric field. This is placed outside tube, but consider where high voltage is applied. You will find the beam that was going straight line initially, but in application of this electrical field, beam started deviating towards, deviating means change the path towards positive plate. You are aware there is attraction between positive and negative. So here, negatively uh, positive uh, they are getting attracted towards positive that means cathode rays must possess negative charge so this is one more information we got now uh, just as I explained uh, they place here track again and again I am telling this is all schematic diagram don't ask me how track is floating there and all that and they place here a wheel something like this wheel is placed here and they started current you will get the wheel is rotating in this direction that means cathode rays possess mass because they are able to implement force because of force only motion is there Without force motion is not possible. You are aware of the formula F equal to mass into acceleration. As a result, force is there. That means there must be mass and acceleration. So cathode rays possess mass. And then based on previous data that uh, how the curve is there and uh, what is the deviation of uh, cathode rays in presence of electrical charge and then what is the way, what is the mass of wheel, what is force required to move that and with what speed it is getting. Scientists were able to calculate a ratio. This ratio that is called as E by M ratio. E stands for charge and M stands for mass. So here we are getting E by M ratio that is charge to mass ratio. So here we got now ratio that is charge to mass ratio for cathode rays. So this is all uh, we can discuss, describe something about cathode ray.